Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. You know, I have a job out in the shop that's calling for a very specific coolant uh, to be used on a very specific material. And I don't feel like filling my machine up with this coolant and creating the, the volume that's required in order to get this done. So I wanted to rig the machine with something simple. And if you don't have a coolant pump in your machinery or in your cabinet that you can use from time to time, well, this is something that I've made completely out of spare parts and recycled materials laying around the shop and it's going to work like a charm. Now initially one of the qualifications for this setup was it's a hands-off setup. I need to control it with my knee or my foot. I need to be able to pump it like a bicycle or something but I need both my hands to do what I'm doing. I wish I could share that with you but I can't. It's NDA. So I'm going to use a one gallon plastic jug. Take a look. I'm going to fill the jug up with the coolant and I'm going to use two airlines. Let's put the black as the airlines. Coming in the top. One line is going to be the spout for the job. And if you have to put a line down into a vessel and extract liquid from that vessel, cut the end of the hose at an angle. That way it doesn't dead end against the bottom of the vessel and cause a suction and shut it off. Okay? If it's cut at an angle, chances are that's not going to happen. Okay, this one goes to the bottom of the vessel. And the second one, the incoming, stops short of the water. Now the concept here is easy. The concept here is to introduce air into the input this way. Travels through here, ends up in this area here, and as the air, as the volume increases over top of that water, it'll push down on the water, and the water's only got one place to go, up and out. Seems simple, seems legit. I'm going to put an air hose on here. Uh, I would really like to hook it up to a regulator, but I don't know that I have the time to mess with valves and such. Okay, second problem that you will encounter with this, and there's no doubt if this is an expandable or even if it's not, as the air pressure in here increases, it's going to stay compressed because air can compress, right? But the liquid can't. So even when you stop the flow of air into that vessel, the pressure in here is still going to pump it out. So you're going to need, if you want to control it to the nth degree, you're going to need a way to bleed the air pressure off of that. And that could be as easy as disconnecting the source from this end, letting the air back back out, or putting some type of little rubber flap on the inside and just hit it with a screw or something. Let's take a walk out there. I'll show you what I did. I'll show you how it performs and uh, put something in your mental toolbox. Maybe help you out in the future. Let's take a walk. All right, this is what the final configuration looks like. Quarter inch tubing. Eighth inch ID, flexible, two pieces. If we take it off with a gallon jug, I have a piece of three eighths tubing fit onto the final because you put this stuff down in there, all it's going to do is curl up. So I use a longer, harder piece to get to the bottom. Slash cut so it doesn't form a vacuum against the bottom of your jug. And I made a three eighths diameter aluminum tip for it with a real small hole because I don't want this flooding out of there. I want a nice tiny stream. And a tip that came to me from Mr. Jeffrey Lewis. So Jeff, if you're watching this buddy, thank you for the tip. He told me that the end of a Noga arm that attaches to your indicator makes an ideal mount for 3 8 I believe he said 3 8 to me. And if this is the 3 8 end, put this in your Noga, position it where you want it, lock it down with the magnet, you're good to go. So Mounting it to your machine would be a piece of cake. So, Jeffrey, thank you for that suggestion. That was a great idea. Got a hydraulic fitting here. One of those push fittings for the tubing. And the thread will go into the nose of the air gun. And whatever you do, when you pressurize this, this is only plastic. Do not squeeze the gun all the way and pressurize this thing with full line pressure because it will probably explode. Gentle squeezes on the air until the liquid starts to flow. Let's fill it up with water, put it to the test.
Now make sure that the air line that you're using doesn't go into the water. It will probably still work, but it's going to bubble and churn things up. Fitting into the air gun. And this is the tube that is submerged all the way to the bottom. Let's turn that around so you can see it. Actually, you really can't see it. Trust me, this one goes to the bottom of the jug. This one is just through the cap. Let's push that into the air hose. Little bit of pressure. That's all you need. No pressure. The pressure in the vessel is now powering the water stream. When the pressure runs out, so does the stream. All right, there you go. It does work. Coolant pump, cheap and easy. All you need is air pressure and a one gallon jug and some tubing. Done. This will serve my purpose quite well. Now I'm not going to lie to you, originally I had planned on putting an inflatable ball on the end of this so that I could squeeze it and maintain the pressure in here. I was going to put this tube on the floor, stand on it, and oscillate that ball with my foot so I could maintain a constant pressure inside this vessel. The only problem with that logic is whatever ball or device you use to deliver air through this tube has to be able to inhale without pulling back on this. So the blood pressure cuffs that you go to the doctor and they go pop, 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 blow it up. Every time they let that thing go, there's a little valve that allows the cuff to reopen without the air rushing back from the cuff that's around your arm. So keep that in mind if that's what you're going to do. I would also say that some type of regulator or small valve is the way to go because you don't want this to explode. And it would probably pop pretty quick. There you go. I'm going to use it on the lathe. I cannot show you what I'm going to use it for. But you need a pump. Probably got one laying around. Didn't even know it. Thanks for watching.